can let okay. him in. Um, I'll start and I'll introduce everybody and then I'll hand it over. Um, so welcome everybody to uh, the session. These are the board members of the CSTA Georgia chapter. Uh, and we would like you all to meet the board, hear about some initiatives that we had have going on. But the most important part is, while we are the board members, we need you guys to be the chapter. <laughs> and so, as you can hear, people are in school today. And so, um, you may hear some noises in the background, but we're going to get started. And so, um, these this is the list, and we will just go in this order. So, Rhonda, I'll hand it over to you. Hey guys, my name is Rhonda Carpenter Powell, and I am your president of the CSTA of Georgia. Um, I am happy to be here with you today with my dream team. I am so honored to be um, a part of this team. We have a lot of initiatives that we want to put in effect. Um, but the most important thing um, to know is that we are here for you. Um, I have been teaching at Forest Park ever since about two, well, I've been teaching ever since there since about 2014. And one of the things that's important to me is because when I started teaching, they said, here's this program. I need you to go. I need you to find some information. I didn't know what to do or where to start, but I started researching and I started going to different places, but I felt alone until I start connecting with other teachers and other people that felt the same way I did. And some of them is actually a part of this team. Um, so again, um, I won't, I'll let them explain it, um, explain what they you know, bring to the table and what they are passionate about. Um, but just know that we are here and we are here to help you and we are here to make sure that your voice is heard. Okay, hello. I am uh, Dr. Janine Walton. I am the vice president and I have experience in online education as well as tradition. No education, I started off as an elementary teacher. So I got a lot of the foundational experience, the pedagogy, you know, learning how to create lesson plans and making sure your standards are aligned. And so a lot of the stuff that elementary um, administration um, is particular about, I was able to strengthen and, you know, understand the method to the madness. And then I transitioned into high school as a CTAE instructor. And I worked with Rhonda for several years um, and we partner and connected. And when she was mentioning about being frustrated, you know, we were able to see that when you get together with someone else, um, the light bulb comes on. And if she has an idea, you know, I may have heard about something or I can push that idea forward and she can do the same. And so we became friends and we uh, stayed in touch and always discuss CS and uh, IT curriculum. So that is one of the things that I bring to the table is curriculum. I have a background in curriculum design. I'm very passionate about the curriculum. I feel like if teachers had the curriculum that they could adapt and make judgments, um, they would be better instructors and they, their students would do better in the classroom because I feel like they are always pulling um, so many pulled in so many different directions and pulling from so many different resources. They it's hard to make something look and look like you know it was well thought out, and so a lot of the time they're just chasing the wheel, you know, trying to uh, spin spinning their wheel, trying to get things going. And so we're excited um, to bring new information to you, professional development. Um, we we have a lot of uh, partners that are willing to make sure they come and, and serve serve our teachers and members and give you different ideas and innovations and things, not just the resources, but making sure that you have the resources that you can apply to your classroom immediately. And it is, I feel like it's great to have the resources, but if you if, I, if we just give you a whole bunch of resources, 
you may become overwhelmed and you won't be able to apply it immediately back to the classroom. And so um, that's one of the things that um, I think Coach Hicks will talk about a little bit later. Um, and so I am here for you. We are here for you as a team. And I'll pass it on to Mr. Hicks. All right. Hello, everybody. My name is Victor Hicks. Um, I am here multitasking today with my CSTA Georgia secretary hat and also my computer science teacher hat. I'm um, getting ready to go live with my students in a little bit. Um, but did, definitely want to say I'm the computer science at the Kandesi School at Old Fourth Ward. Um, this is my sixth computer science passionate about um, getting quality research, uh, increasing networking opportunities, especially across the kindergarten through fifth grade band. Um, started here, or excuse me, computer science education started um, where I moved here from Chicago six years ago to teach science at Mary Lynn. So like Janine mentioned, we did not really have a curriculum to speak of able to learn a lot of best practices um, for curriculum and, and meaningful lessons for my students. Um, one of the things I definitely wanted to bring to the board is uh, increasing our presence, increasing the opportunity, creating a hub of resources, PBL, so to speak, and so to for K through eight, well, K through 12 computer science teachers uh, totally, but definitely looking at um, the K through five teachers, because many times they lay the, um, they are the ones that kind of get kids at the very beginning. Want to start developing some of those computational thought practices. And but many times teachers wear many hats, whether they're pair media specialists or volunteer that comes in and works in the library on Thursdays. Um, but we want to make sure that we are giving those teachers that support the resources um, that they need. So emails, if you guys look, get the uh, the updates, that's me. Um, <laughs> be patient. Make sure that our um, our offerings, our network elements are um, things that you guys find important and necessary. So um, the more surveys, out, uh, outreach that we just want to make sure that it's um, it is a, really a family effort and that we're supporting you, the teachers of Georgia in the way that um, find it. Now, want to, is uh, Ms. Williams here today or no? Ms. Williams was not able to get on, so next we'll pass it to Matavia. Uh, Good afternoon, everyone. I am Batavia Sumlin, and I apologize for not looking like I am on task, but I got my Google Meet with my kids on my phone, and I got you guys on the computer. So this is what your, your CTSA Georgia board, that's what we do. We are multitaskers. Um, a little bit about myself. You know what? Hold on. How far away are y'all from me? Okay, y'all good. Um, Background is in um, from the military. I was um, stationed in, at Fort Gordon, Georgia, um, in the Signal Corps. Um, was originally um, um, an information systems operator. So that's how I got my first um, um, glimpse of technology back when the internet was on um, Netscape. So that's how. That's how long it's been. Um, my background, like I said, is pretty much in, in IT. I am a self-taught computer programmer. Um, have been teaching for approximately 16 years. Um, 12 of those years of which were in the private um, school setting. Um, so I was one of the people um, in my school who was the go-to um, computer person. Um, so I did everything from the business um, tech type of courses all the way to CS. Um, I also currently, I am at um, Stockbridge High School. I teach the programming pathway. Um, Dr. Walton has, happens to be our county lead. 
and I met Miss Carpenter through um, Janine, and we have been buddies ever since. Um, I met Miss Whitlock. I believe I met Miss Whitlock through um, some other courses that she offered, um, and just knew that CS is where I wanted to be. I am a a huge advocate of um, equity. Um, in not only in the, the classroom, but just in CS in general. Um, and with that, I work part-time um, at Clayton State University um, in the computer science department, um, teaching some of the intro level um, courses that we offer. So anywhere from just basic information technology foundations to um, web design. Um, but out of the group, I am the professed um, how, how should I put this? The professed gadget guru. If there's a gadget, I know how to program it. I can program a Spiro. I can program a Circuit Playground, um, Microbits, Arduinos, um, Raspberry Pis, you name it, I know how to do it. Um, so that is something else that I hope to bring to the table are some of those um, those those get you items, those things that, that hook the kids into CS um, while they may not necessarily like the sitting behind the computer and actually typing out code, I can show them how to make that code work on a device. Um, so I'm looking forward to working with everyone across the state, not only in that realm, but working with the colleges to ensure that what we're teaching in high school correlates to what they're going to be exposed to in college. Um, so with that, I will hand it over to our chapter leaders. Um, first up is Miss Pamela Whitlock. Hello, everybody. Um, you know, I'm sitting here listening to all the officers. There, there's not a whole lot I can add because I think you guys have covered everything. But, uh, but my name is Pam Whitlock. I teach AP Computer Science and UX Design at Chattahoochee High School. Um, you know, I... I teach every day because I love it, and, and I love seeing mm -hmm. students that come to class that are just curious and nervous, and all of a sudden, you know, they're turning into excited, eager learners, and I think that's one of the beautiful things about computer science is that it's not limited to a certain type of student. It can, and, and what Batavia was saying about hooking students, you know, however However, we can break down those barriers and get them in and get them excited. Um, it just opens so many doors for them. So, um, you know, I've, I do a lot of computer science stuff um, around the state for the Department of Ed, for the College Board, for Georgia Tech. So you may see me in lots of different little places. But at the end of the day, I think one of the best things we can do for computer science and computer science teachers is to make sure that no one feels isolated. And I think that's it's a hard Thing to overcome as a computer science teacher because a lot of times you're the only one in the school and you're just struggling to get through each day and to have a group where that you can lean on just to get advice and share successes is going to make what you do so much more worthwhile to yourself personally and that's going to translate over to the students as well. So um, I'm glad to be here. This is such a wonderful group and um, I will pass it on over to Yolanda Payne. Yeah. And so you will notice um, all of um, our panelists, all of them, but most of them are still working today. So you'll see them drop in and drop, you know, come back. They are they are actively listening, but they are uh, still at work. Um, my name is Yolanda Payne, and I work for the Constellation Center for Equity and Computing at Georgia Tech. Uh, it is my honor to work with these practitioners. This fall, um, I will. It will be my 22nd year in education. I've worked from kindergarten to college uh, in a variety of capacities. And as everyone has said, it when I got to computer science, I was alone. And so we are hoping to alleviate that. Um, and the next person that is going to speak um, actually comes to us because of an initiative that we're trying to start and that we're going to talk more of. And um, that's Mr. Brandon Murray. Uh, Brandon is not an official part of the board, but he is one of the first representatives on uh, our advisory board. And so we're going to give him an opportunity to say a few words. All right, there we go, unmute. Hi, yeah, so <clears throat> I'm not on the, the board, so I feel kind of weird being up here. Um, but there's 
uh, I got a project that I'm working on and I'm looking to get other people excited about it and hopefully Brandon, we can't hear you. You can't hear me? You can't hear me at all? No. Yeah, okay. Brandon, I, we I can hear okay, you. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. Cool, cool. Yeah, so uh, I come from sort of uh I'm a math teacher and uh and uh taught a little computer science, but I'm this hobbyist of, you know, open source software. And so what I found was that in open source they had a bunch of volunteers who figured out that they could build a common set of software that everyone needs and give it away through this sort of special licensing. And I saw that as an educator and I went, hey, like we have the same issue. There's a common set of curriculum that we all need. And unfortunately, we're all reinventing the wheel every year and we don't really have great ways to share it. And so then it struck me. I said, hey, wait, what if we took the the tools that computer science people use to collaborate and we shared our resources as computer science teachers using those tools, which are relevant to us and relevant to our students, and uh, and see if we can't accomplish some of the same stuff. So here's what I'd like to do. Um, I'm going to post a link to this GitHub organization. Um, <clears throat> and you can kind of see it over there where it's, uh, yeah, you're not gonna be able to see it on my screen, um, where it has GitHub repositories where we can include links to websites or assignments, uh, Google Docs, uh, you know, code, code bases, so that we can all have a place, one place to go to find materials, but also because it's on GitHub, teachers can uh, collaboratively build these repositories. So we, we can all kind of add the little pieces that we have and we know. And so at the start, uh, my job is to just sort of, you know, get something in there, some instructions on how to use it, um, and then to curate it so that people's, people's contributions can, you know, it kind of makes sense. So if as we're doing as we're going through this uh this this panel if people would like to be involved um if they'd like to contribute what i would have you do on the side is go make a github account and throw me your email in the chat and i will get you added and we can get this thing going so if y'all if y'all think that's a cool idea literally put your email in chat right now and we will be collaborating by the end of this panel. <laughs> Yay. And that's what we are here for. Uh, and so I'm going to um, start and we're going to talk about some of the initiatives. Um, and so, Rhonda, I'll hand it over to you. OK. So some I, I want to before I even get into talking about the initiatives, talk to you a little bit more about this team that we have. Um, like I say, it is the dream team. Um, I am creating nicknames for all of them. They don't know it yet. Um, so so far, I just got one. You know, and just because I've been knowing her for years, but Dr. Walton, she is your resource queen. Trust me when I tell you any type of resources that you need. Um, if you, um, I can tell her, you know what? I, I was thinking about, I need to find this. Whatever I can say, um, time I say it, like, oh, I know I'm getting like 50 million emails of different type of resources. Um, and so I am, and so that's why I'm excited for Brandon also to be a part of the team when he's talking about the GitHub and the um, depository for the for the resources for you guys. I am just so excited. Victor, you know, he is Coach Hicks and he is our um, social media person. Like, I, it's just, y'all just don't know the gifts that this team has. And I can't wait until you get a chance to experience it. Um, one of the initiatives that we want that we are trying to do is called each one reach one and um that is like if you are a member of cst 
Georgia already. Um, and if you know another teacher that or that's teaching um, CSTA and they're not a member, if you can just let them know, let them know like, hey, we, you know, CSTA is here. Um, it's been here for a while. Like, like I said, we just came on in January. So it's not, it's like we are kind of re-ramping it. So at first, um, the president was um, Teresa Yarborough. And so it's not like we are starting over. We are just, she just kind of handed me the torch. And we're just going to do a continuation of what she started. Um, we are going to be doing raffles and prizes for members recruitly monthly. Um, you're going to get information about our monthly meetings. Um, Victor is going to be sending you that information. Um, do anybody else want to do the advisory board? I'll take that. So okay. we're um, also looking at doing an advisory board. And as we said, Brandon is our first recruit. Uh, and our goal is not to just have CSTA Georgia, a metro Georgia entity. We want this to be a statewide effort um, because that way we are more powerful and we can, you know, share resources and share information and just just make it a statewide entity. Um, and so we'll be reaching out with some information about that. We've already reached out to some of the higher ed um, higher ed uh, positions and we have a few representatives. And so if you know that you're good at something or if you know you're the only person in your district or your region or your area, um, please let us know that. And we'll be working with you guys to uh, to improve and make CSTA Georgia ours. Not just the, you know, a few people's, but ours. And with that, I'm going to ask Janine to talk about our improved social media presence. So, yes, Coach Hicks um, is over our social media, and he had to jump off um, to continue his uh, meeting with the students. But we are trying to have a presence to represent Georgia. And we want to collect information. We're looking at the chats. I've been looking at the chats through the different sessions because I understand that's how you get the content. And we are going to address a lot of that in our social media posts. So a lot of uh, attendees today ask a lot of great questions in the chat. And I was just monitoring some of the different chat rooms, uh, or different sessions and looking at the chats because we are here for you, and one of the things that we talked about in our last meeting was we were here to listen to you, and you have a voice, and we want your voice to be heard. A lot of times we know that teachers and instructors have opinions, they have great ideas, and a lot of times they keep them to themselves, and we want you to be active. We, we will listen to you. We will help you in any way that we can, and social media, when done correctly, is a great platform to express your ideas. And we can engage in meaningful um, discussions. You know, we can pose a question on our social media posts in a fun way. And you can engage with us there. And we will definitely have uh, members of our team monitoring it and getting back to you and engaging back in the discussion. And so we do want to have an improved social media uh, presence. It will launch this summer. We have been working hard behind the scenes. Um, to make sure it's engaging, it's fun. We have a, a lot of things that we think you will enjoy because we have been listening to you. And so um, we are excited about that. And um, I don't know who wants to speak about the professional development and resources for K K-12, but I can start it off. Um, I know Brandon is collecting a lot of um, information. We've met um, to discuss that as well, but we are, reaching out with different partners for professional development. Um, we have a lot of different companies that are interested in assisting us with this initiative. And we have heard a lot of instructors and their struggle when we heard it in their voices. And we know that resources, not just the resources, but understanding how to teach the standards, understanding, um, I know Yolanda did a session earlier on breaking down the standards. Um, dissecting the standards. And so we are going to provide a variety of 
professional development in a great way for you. We are not going to overwhelm you, but we are going to make sure that we touch on things that you can grab and um, implement immediately. So just like your students love that immediate feedback and it makes a difference for them, we're going to do the same with our professional development. And we will have a resource hub for K-12. So if you teach something from K to any um, subject that's computer science related, or even if it's not computer science related and you're responsible for in implementing STEM, because we do realize that a lot of schools are starting to recognize and it is being mandated by the state to implement uh, CS in all schools. So I think 2022, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so we are going to do that and we look forward to servicing you with professional development and resources for K-12. And also, yeah, also, when it comes to your professional development, um, we don't want to just provide professional development that we think that you need. Uh, we send out surveys. We're going to start sending out more surveys. So when you get that survey, please answer it. If, it's, if there's a professional development that you, that you would be interested in um, or something that you want to learn about, please answer the survey because we are listening. Um, so, and that's that's one of the things that we want to do to make sure that we're giving you guys what you need and not just what we think you need. Like Janine said, it's your voice. It's important that, to know that your voice is being heard. Anybody else want to talk about professional development? Rhonda, not, I'm sorry, um, Rhonda, you skipped over the, the last bullet point with the um, yes. higher ed connections. Higher um, ed connections. Yes. Okay. My goal with the higher ed connections is to kind of divide up the state into regions um, and try to, to determine what um, colleges are located in those particular areas and try to reach out directly to them, um, to their either the deans of their, um, of their computer science schools or IT. Sometimes they're in two different um, divisions because sometimes, guess what, IT falls under business and not under the umbrella of, of computer science. So um, my goal over the next six months or so is to make sure that we have some type of point of contact um, listed either on a centralized location like our website or, or something like that that you can go to directly and say, hey, um, I teach in, I don't know, um, Lowndes County. Um, What's, what schools in my immediate area can I start steering my students to, oh, um, or if not necessarily in my immediate area, um, it, within the state. Um, I think a lot of our programs, I know Clayton State in particular, I don't want to say that we get a bad rep, but a lot of people don't know, hey, we have an, a game design um, degree program. Um, our cybersecurity program was just approved two years ago and is really picking um, up steam. Um, we have a, we're getting a robotics lab this year. So like little things like that um, is what I, I'm gonna to try to bring to the table as far as making sure that everyone is aware of what is in their particular area. I and mean, not necessarily so much so in the, in this, well, of course we're gonna start with our state first because you know, we got HOPE, um, the HOPE grant, HOPE scholarship, but also looking at some of those other programs that may be um, outside of, of the state. I know, I know a lot of our students like looking at other places. Um, so if there are any programs or anything like that in or colleges in your area that um, we may not know about, please, please, please make sure that, that you um, send me an email so that I can reach out to who um, we need to reach out to. And like I said, our main goal is to make sure that what we are teaching in the high schools um, correlate directly to the programs in our colleges. Um, I know that in our intro classes, we have a lot of kids that do come in from other, other schools. They do have a hard time in intro to CS because we may or may not have missed the mark in our um, high school program. So we want to try to, like I said, bridge that gap. So next we want to talk to you about joining the chapter. Um, I, I know a lot of people that have said, well, you know, Rhonda, I joined the chapter. I joined the chapter, but it's a two-step process. Once you join CSTA, 
you then you have to go through and find your local chapter, your state chapter and join Georgia. So I have seen people that, that's joined and they told me that they joined, but they just under CSTA. So please make sure and, and make sure you let everybody know, let the teachers know that when they join CSTA, they have to go in and join and find Georgia, our chapter, and then join that also. Okay. Next, is that the last slide, Yolanda? Okay, so Yolanda or y'all you could talk about that. Okay. Can you see me? Oh, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, okay, great. All right, so we're gonna talk about uh, the chapter meetings. So the second Tuesday of each month, we will have a chapter meeting and we will um, send out information. Uh, so look forward to that. We're going to make sure you are able to. Um, we have a theme um, called Taco Tuesdays. And so Taco Tuesdays is something that's easy to remember and we, of course, will be virtual, but we'll have some fun things um, associated with Taco Tuesday just to make it fun and engaging and make it more of a community. Um, I know we've been virtual. A lot of people have been stuck in, home, in their homes, safe in their homes, though, um, but still in their homes. And sometimes you can feel like you're closed in. Um, but we will have our chapter meetings the second Tuesday of each month. And we decided to make it consistent this way so that you will always remember. So stick in your head, in your mind, um, that we will have a meeting. After meetings, we will have information like I, we mentioned before. We are not gonna overwhelm you. We know that you have a lot to do. As you can see, we have a lot of members that are still doing double shifts, uh, teaching, being members of different boards, associations. So we will not overwhelm you, but we want the chapter meetings to be refreshing. We want our chapter meetings to um, answer questions, to let you know that you are not alone, like Rhonda mentioned earlier, to let you know that we have resources. And if you have a question and we don't have the answer, we will find it for you. We will find you a, a solution because we are, are big on not necessarily being complainers. I know um, a lot of times it's easy to complain and because you feel like nobody hears you. And so that's why we wanted to make that loud and clear that we are listening to your voice. You have a voice with us and we are going to have our first uh, meeting um, the second Tuesday in April. And we're excited. We're excited for you to come aboard. Like Rhonda mentioned, please, um, join and do the two-step process and we will discuss upcoming events next and yolanda is the i would say the guru of donors choose workshop <laughs> um she's great at that so i'll let her talk about donors choose yes uh our next our next chapter meeting and workshop is going to be tuesday april the 13th I think it's at 6 p.m. Um, we wanted to get as many people as we could uh, in there. And I, as I mentioned before, I've gotten donors choose projects funded from $100 to my biggest one was $6,000 for professional development um, that also that paid for the professional development and gave me a stipend. And so we're going to offer that workshop twice. Um, if you are new to donors choose, I'm posting a link in the um, chat. If you sign up through that, I'm able to get some money towards your project to, to you. Uh, I Since I am not in the classroom, what they give to me, I give back to the teachers. Um, and one big event that uh, one of our sponsors and one big event that's coming up is the Emphasis uh, Summer Institute. The micro bit is uh, giving us some micro bits to raffle away. Uh, on Monday, we're going to send out an email to all the members of Georgia CSTA. And if you're one of the top 20 people to get your name and get that submitted, um, then you'll get a micro bit sent directly from them. And so um, as Janine and Rhonda said, we are working to get resources 
um, things that are of value to you. And so we're going to um, if you come out to this Donors Choose workshop, I can help you set up your um, your profile and get you some money and some resources and some things. I know that that is a big, big deal. So if you're new to Donors Choose, use that link. It signs you up and I'm able to pass along some free money to you. Uh, and then the next thing we have is a professional development, um, <laughs> a professional development survey. So from June 1st to the 15th, we're going to ask you what you need. And then we're going to compile all those results. And that will inform our kickoff for the 2021-2022 school year. It's going to be in July. Uh, we know it'll be around the national conference, which is July 14th through the 16th. And um, we are, we're just excited. Uh, we know that this has been a trying year for anybody in the education field, but we want, as Janine said, we're going to help you um, and, and, and helping you that helps our students, that helps our state. And so an announcement that if you were here earlier, um, that's in conjunction with Constellations, which is where I work, there we are giving away um, some grants to start a CS Honor Society. Um, I'll be helping to spearhead that with the center, but we want, um, we want schools to be involved. And so um, we were able to secure some funding and uh, we will help you get that first year started and then help you sustain that. We're not just gonna start you off and be like, oh, now you're on your own. Um, we're going to help you figure out ways to sustain uh, your honor society. And I think this is a great way that not only gets you involved in, in our chapter, but it gets your students involved. So um, look into that. I'll put that link in the chat as well. Uh, and there's some criteria. And if you have any questions, um, th this I'll put this slideshow in the link as well. Rhonda? Okay. So what I, we wanted to do is give you guys a way to get in contact with us. These are all of our emails from the president, the vice president, um, the treasurer, the secretary, the higher um, ed rep, and then our chapter leader. So at any time that you can, you have a question, um, you have a concern, you have an idea about a PD and you missed a survey, um, or if it's something that you feel like you can um, add to the board, if you want, if you have an idea or something that you want to present at a PD, PD, you can just email one of us and just let us know. Like I said, we are here to help. I am excited because we are multitasking. Um, we're doing this. I have a class. But one thing that I really noticed is that my phone keeps going off because of the email. So every time that someone joins um, CSTA Georgia, I get the email and it, the people have been joining all day. So I'm very excited about that. Um, we are on our way. I believe that this year um, you got, we're going to have a great year and we are, you know, again, honored to be here to serve you. And again, any way that we can help you to make you better in your classroom, that's what we're here for. And so with that said, we are now going to open um, up the session for any questions that you may have. To share your screen and audio, we can do that, or you can put your questions in the chat. y'all to not to be scared there's not a link to the chapter web page yet uh, we're gonna launch that in june um we, it, it, so we're gonna launch that in june but we will definitely do that okay you do have to have a course in place to apply um if, if we find that that's a barrier to people applying, then that can be adjusted because the funds are local to constellations. Um, but if you, yes, that was, that was our hope, but I can, you know, I can check with Lynn and see if we find that that's a barrier. We're not meaning, we don't want to make this harder. So we can, we can see how we can be of assistance.
a quick question. Uh, can I can I rename my GitHub organization uh, Georgia Computer Science Teachers Association? You might got a problem with that. <clears throat> <laughs> All right, I'm doing it. <clears throat> so thanks for everyone who's uh, who signed up and uh, gave me that. Oh, maximum character. Okay, I'll figure it out. No, Rhonda, the only one that I see in the chat, we had someone that asked if um, there was a old Google site um, for Georgia CSTA, and Yolanda handled it. She said that that's not the current site. Um, we need to put the, the actual CSTA um, website in the chat, so I'll get that right quick. Um, Ms. Johnny, you have to actually go to the main CSTA organization um, for the country or um, to, to join there. And then from that point, you select Georgia as your local chapter. So I'll get that site right quick for you guys. Yeah, that, oh, Ms. Lynn, she got it. And do you have any words, uh, anything you'd like to say? I know you're jumping between sessions. I see Maureen has one about a junior CS under society. I have not heard anything about that, but um, we can definitely see. And I, I, you know, I don't know anything of it, but we can definitely see it, and that would be a great lead in for their future. So um, I am going to mute myself and I'm probably going to have to change locales because I hear these sirens going off for bad weather. Okay, so um, I will say this if y'all don't have any more questions. When we was talking about higher ed, it just made me uh, remember. So we are like, Batavia is our higher ed person. Um, for Clayton State, and of course, Yolanda is for um, Georgia um, Tech, but we also have DEPA, and DEPA is a higher ed rep for um, Kennesaw State, and what one of the things that we also, we're trying to do is get higher ed reps for all, as many of the colleges that we can in the state of Georgia. So that is another initiative. We have a lot of initiatives going on, but trust me, we have a lot of, we have a great team and we are going to get um, these initiatives done. So if any more questions. Well, if there are no more questions, um, we want to thank you for taking your time to talk to us, to get to know us a little bit, and we look forward um, to working with you. Thank you. <clears throat> if anybody wants to stick around, um, it might be kind of uh, play around on the GitHub. I know we're about to have a networking session, so maybe we can... Uh, we can do a little bit of that. Thank you so much, Miss Rhonda, for for in, you know including me and and you know the leadership that you've shown. Say you know I just gave you an email saying, hey, how can I be involved? And you said, oh well, what if we have you know I got this idea for these this county role, <laughs> and that's that's so cool, and that's I think can turn out to be really powerful because just just since you know you giving me encouragement and saying, hey. Can you do this sort of thing for us? Um, I'm talking with all my computer science teachers in the district and, you know, 
like we're talking about how to collaborate and that's just that's just a, such a cool thing yes and we are, we are very excited we are looking forward to see what we can do and how we can make um csta the biggest and the best um csta chapter that there is in this you know all over so again thank you guys um again if you want to stay over with brandon that's awesome. But thank you guys for coming and we really appreciate it and look forward to hearing some, give some information from us in the future. So good to see everyone. <clears throat> All right. So anybody want to mess around on GitHub? <laughs> I'm just sitting here and adding people. I'm making everyone owners because you know what? That's the power of, uh, that's open source. We got to empower people. And so, you know, how can we empower each other and collaborate? So here's the, here's the basic, um, here's the basic idea. We create repositories for each of the classes that we have. Hey, it looks like I'm missing a few. Anybody want to come over on this? Let me resend the link. Anybody want to come over to our Georgia Computer Science Teachers Association GitHub organization and create a new repository for a class that's currently not there? <clears throat> Anybody doing middle school? What are those classes called? Let's make sure that we make our repositories public as well. So are you looking like for CS discoveries, Brandon? Are you looking like for the middle school curriculum resources or? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm like kind of pretending to be a teacher here. I think, I think I have some of the names, but um, I'm curious if someone else could go and create a repository on our organization for one of these courses. Somebody, somebody call it out. <clears throat> Say, I'm, I'll do it, I'll do it. It's over here, it's this button that says new. You give it a name, let's make it public, and definitely add a readme, and I'll, I'll try to, good, Amber. Um, I'll try to explain what a readme is. Okay, Amber, make a repository like this, and we'll see if we can see it. So a GitHub repository is, what it is, is a repository of code and github is based on the tool called git and git is this version control system and so what it does it just tracks changes to files if you add a file it makes it remembers that that you made a new file if you if you change a line it remembers uh it updates the files with the new line but it also remembers the old stuff okay so inside of a repo, you're going to have a few different things. You're going to have, usually, if there's something called readme, it's going to pop up on GitHub when you open the repository. And so this is sort of your, your launch pad. You know, here, what we, need, what we need to have is we need to have instructions on what exactly is this, uh, this file is and description of where to go for certain things. So we've added a, uh, like a pacing guide. You know, that might be one good way to, uh, to organize links to whatever we like to use. I'm gonna come back here and see if anybody added a course. No, not yet. <clears throat> Well, I'm just so, from Wisconsin trying to figure this out, but, and to see how you guys are gonna use this in Georgia. I noticed that, like, I'm, I'm assuming that only your chapter uh, officers are the ones that can modify this? No, every single person that I added can totally modify it. They could delete everything. It's set up where somebody could completely delete this organization. <laughs> okay, but it also is set up so that anyone can add a repository that they like. Anyone can come and modify any repositories. So, for example, here I'm in the AP Computer Science A repository. Okay, if I wanted to add, if I wanted to edit this file right here, what's nice about GitHub is I don't have to do all the kind of more intense coding with Git. I can just come over to whatever page I'm on 
and click this little pencil icon and it will bring me to the text file because ultimately this is a tool for source code, right? It's a source code uh, version control system. So this is text. And this text file is using a specific format called Markdown. And so there's a little bit of a learning curve on this, but I think if we just kind of look at it, you can see what's going on here. There's a way to share links. There's a way to do headings. And so let's see, anybody, anybody got a website that they like to use for APA? What's a, what's, what's a good APA website? Purdue Owl. Let's go make sure Purdue Owl. Sure, whatever. Okay, writing lab. Okay, so if I wanted to, I could create a link. I just do this real quick, I add it to the file, I scroll down, and then I'll commit my changes. And what that does, yeah, let's let's put in a REPL. <clears throat> um oh wait, it's not REPL, it's not REPL anymore. So basically, if I come in and put in, what's the REPL? It's REPLIT. I make a change to the file, and then I commit my changes. That will update the repository forever. That change will be tracked forever. I can roll back to a previous version if I need to, and that's what's so nice about version control. Added links, okay? Now when I commit the changes, GitHub handles kind of the the, the nastier bits of, you know, making these changes. And so this, I believe this is accessible for us teachers. I think you don't need to be an open source master to use this open source tool. You don't need to be a computer science, you know, professional to collaborate the way that computer science professionals collaborate. And so, you know, thank you guys, whoever, uh, you know, kind of added, uh, at, got got the email. I got your emails and I'll probably, oh, there it is, foundations. Bam, we got some repositories. So <clears throat> over the next couple months, the goal is to um, come in here and add files, um, add add certain files and come up with an organizational scheme so that we can properly just make things, make it accessible, make it usable and give instructions on how other people can, uh, can, can add to it. And so this is uh, pretty cool, but I guess uh, I got a class about to start. So we'll probably go do that. <laughs> foundations, middle school foundations. This is cool. What do we need? We need a README, right? Code. We recommend every repository. Let's do a README. Boom. Create README. Boom. Make that commit. Now that now this repository has a README, and that's that first file. It says we need a README. Let's do it. Okay, creating a change. Read me. Now we have that. Do you want to go? Follow the same name. Oh, okay. Somebody already did it. What? Nice. Okie dokies. Thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of the summit. <clears throat> hey, oh my email again y'all hey if you like are super down with this and you want to be involved I, i'm i'm putting together the team of you know excited people so give me give me a shout i need we need a team we don't have enough we got i don't know there's like four or five of us um so please 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 feel free to email me um because you know in the end it'd be great if some people really took took this and, and ran with it because I know there's some great teachers with some great stuff, and uh, and uh, I I don't have it I don't I don't have that stuff and so you know we we need each other and let's let's do it. Woo! <laughs> right, bye.